Greetings. Back in August 2011, I put together a video, well, I recorded a video, um, covering a few of these um, compact fluorescent lights for fitting into halogen fittings. Uh, there's this one, there's this 20 watt one as well, and there's also this 40 watt one. And you wouldn't have seen this video because I never actually edited it down and uploaded it. But I'm going to cut across to some highlights from that now. And then come back to take a look at this one. These ones are both rated, well that one's rated at 20 watts. That's 24, this one's 40. But you can see this is a, a much bigger unit. It's not meant for one of these, it's meant for one of those. A little bit bigger. Now they say it's an equivalent of a thousand watt fitting. What they mean is it fits a thousand watt fitting. It's not the equivalent of a thousand watt output. It's uh, the equivalent of about 200 watts I think. So it's still, uh, still pretty bright for a 40 watt fit in, it's quite a power saving. I'll show you what they're like now. I can't show you the 20 watt ones in comparison to a 500 watt lamp because the reason I bought them is that my 500 watt lamp is blown. But I can compare these though because I've got two of these units. So let's fit it and try it out. Right, that's the two fit ins with the tubes. That's got a conventional 1000 watt tube. That's got the 40 watt fluorescent. It's a little bit of a fiddle to fit. I'm going to mess around with the screwdriver to sort of get the uh, get the pins to hold back while you fit it in. But once it's in, it does the job. There you go. A little bit of a flicker then, because like I said, the pins are. That's better. That's just because the fitting is a bit old and manky. Uh, nice and bright, not as bright as that, but nowhere near as wasteful as that either. On the left is 40 watts, one on the right is 1000 watts. Here's the same fitting now, lighting up my scabby back lane. See, it's not too bad. It's no match for the other one though. It's a shame that they're so bloody big basically. It'd be much better if a 40 watt would fit in a 500 watt fit in. But there you go. Not bad for, uh, I think it was £5 plus the VAT. And the whole fit in with the 20 watt was £17 I think. And the other light was £7 odd, the 24 watt one. So, not bad, that's from QVS. Pretty quick delivery, and all in all, I think I'll use them again. Right, I managed to fit that. It's a real pain to install, I've had to cut the foil backing, remove the nut from the back as well, and do lots of dremeling to get it to fit, but it's in there. If you don't mind doing dremeling, then it's okay, otherwise, probably better, better off trying to get hold of another one like a Mega Man or something like that or just fit a normal tube incidentally the other one didn't want to fit in here either with the file backing in place I had to remove that now why have I got such an interest in this 24 watt Cosnic branded lamp well this is why I've had to take this out of the fitting because when the it's always it's in a, um, a PIR switched Flood lamp. But the problem is it hasn't been coming on. You see it takes a lot of jiggery pokery basically. It takes a lot of encouragement before it will actually strike. Which is no good at all. So let's take a look inside. Hopefully I'll be able to crack it open without smashing it open and 
also hopefully I'll be able to actually find what's wrong with it and repair it. It hasn't had a particularly harsh life. It's been in there about three years, but in that period I've already gone through two um, 180 degree PIR fittings because even though they're supposed to be waterproof, water does get into them and it knackers them up because they're cheap and they're crap. So I've got a Steinl IS-1 now, which will hopefully outlast the other ones. And I need to put a decent tube, uh, decent tube in here to complete the job. So let's find out what's inside it. It does get surprisingly warm surprisingly quickly. So let's take a look around the outside. You can see this is a Cosnic KCF 24R, uh, 24R7. Sorry, you can't read the rest of the code because it's it's been scuffed off. And also, you'll see um, since doing the video, I had to carve this to actually make it make it fit uh, because otherwise it wouldn't actually. Uh, in the lamp it's actually gone into, these side uh, connections were actually too narrow, sorry they were too wide to fit on this. Uh, these are slightly wider than the one I've, uh, I've got on the uh, on the garage, but uh, this would not fit without having to carve it to see it. It was either a case of carving this or trying to carve or break the ceramic and I didn't want to do that. This is easier. So, let's take a look at what's inside. And they seem quite easy to, to pop apart to start with. That is clipped there, and there are two clips at the top, so that's the back edge off, which gives you an idea of what's in. A little bit of an idea about what's inside. And you can also see here the way the two halves of the case appear to be held together. There are clips here. That clip there seems to go only about half an inch down. So there are going to be clips like that. So I should be able to pop this open. Let's bring the uh, camera down here. It makes it easier for me to, to do this. Will I crack it open successfully? Of course I will, because if I don't, this will never make it onto YouTube. That's the first clip released. And hopefully I can find, yep, there's the second clip at that point there. And that's the third, which should make getting the back off easier as well and there we go we're in and first impressions it's quite a it's quite a complex design let's take a look at that and yeah pull the wires back there we go so that's actually that just sits there um, here's the circuit and what I'm expecting, to be honest, uh, what I'm hoping for is something, um, some sort of dodgy dry joint on the bottom or something. Am I right to not trust the capacitor? Or am I just being overly cautious? Let's find out without getting in the way. It's creeping down, it's, it's, it would have been That would have bitten me if I'd taken it. Uh, if I'd gone mauling it straight off, you can see it's been, it's been out. Of, it's been out for a minute, so for uh, it's been out for a little while. You can see that's actually discharging nicely now. Here's the board with the the tube itself disconnected from its wire app pins on the end, and uh, also disconnected from the. 
from the back. So, as you can see, well, thinking about it, it's not quite as complex as I first thought. It's more complex than some of the cheap and nasty power supplies I've seen. Uh, in that, uh, <laughs> this has actually got two transistors in it. Um, and here's the, the back, and you can see what I was saying about some of the, the corrosion along here, which I think is on the, on the surface more than anything else. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolder all of these connections. Those wire wrap pins, I don't know why they they were wire wrapped. It may be something to do with this this metal. Perhaps the solder doesn't want to take to this. This does look um, a bit corroded actually, so it might I might struggle to uh, to get these soldered. But I will try to solder them. Uh, solder them back on. So I'll solder those on, uh, I'll redo all of these solder joints and also I'll take a look and see if I can work out the uh, work out the circuit diagram. Here's the circuit diagram. Now on the left you've got your familiar uh, bridge rectifier AC to DC converter circuit up as far as E1 which is the smoothing capacitor. So you've got your 240 volts coming in and then you've got your 340 volts DC coming out to feed the rest of the circuit. Over to the right hand side you've got a pair of transistors and a small transformer of only a few turns. And that's the oscillator circuit which drives the fluorescent lamp through another inductor. And in the middle we've got a handful of components which I thought may be to do with actually kick-starting the circuit and I've done a little bit of searching on the internet and I found this website which covers the, uh, the circuit diagrams for quite a few um, small compact fluorescent bulbs and they're similar, similar circuits to this and indeed the circuit to, that um, drives Q2 via DB3 is for kick-starting the, the whole thing. When they start up, they need something to actually get the circuit oscillating. Once it starts oscillating, it's fine. And that's exactly what we've had here, is if I manage to get the thing to actually start, it would run properly without that initial trigger, which might be something like turning it off and on repeatedly, it wouldn't actually get that oscillation going. So that led me to, to suspect some of the circuitry over there. And the first thing I tested was DB3, the DIAC, and that works properly. I tested that just with a pygmy bulb and a 60 volt power supply. And as soon as I took the supply above 32 volts, it started conducting. And it conducted until the voltage dropped right back down then to 5 volts. So the DIAC is fine. So the next thing I suspected then were the two resistors, R2 and R1, which are both supposed to be 510K. Now this is R2. By the way, these transistor testers, you can pick these up from eBay for about 20 odd quid if you include the, uh, the little adapter as well for taking components straight in the front. Just get one. These things are brilliant. They'll I need. I bought one because I needed uh, something to to read ESR from capacitors, and it does that. It does transistors. Um, they've got these special modes as well. If you uh, if you haven't got a component on them, you can, uh, you can run them with. A, there's a frequency counter, and there's all sorts on there. But I digress. Um, this is supposed to be 510k, you can see it's actually reading 810k. So that's not right. And the other one, which I shall hook up now, this is R1. It can't see it at all. And in fact, if I test it with the fluke, it's open circuit. It's this one's completely failed, and this is also supposed to be a 510 ohm resistor. Uh, sorry, 510k resistor. Um, while this is going now, I can, I can take you into this. 
there we go transistor test frequency um, counter frequency generator uh, 10 bit PWM we go from 10 10% uh, up to 100% uh, don't know what that is um, I'd have to do some digging on the internet but um, really for 20 odd quid you'll get them even cheaper if you don't want the case but these things are fantastic but I digress again so these two resistors from the starter circuit have failed so they won't charge up C2 C2 needs to get charged up to 32 volts in order to get DB3 to fire and then kickstart Q2 which will then get the whole oscillation thing going obviously if these have failed it's not going to happen so I've changed those out I've completely Desoldered and resoldered all the joints on the board as well, so they all look fresh. Um, I think it used lead-free solder before, so the uh, the, uh, the connections all looked a bit manky. You couldn't tell whether the joints are dry or not. So I've desoldered all those, resoldered them. It's all nice and shiny. Replaced these two resistors, and let's see what happens. Yay! Uh, let's put that into that mode and there we go, you can see we're drawing 23.1 watts it'll climb a little bit as it, as it warms up but that's working sweet as a nut for the sake of replacing two resistors two, in this case, 510k resistors Now, admittedly these resistors shouldn't have failed in the first place I mean you're talking one meg ohm between the two just over one meg ohm between the two so it's only going to pass at 340 volts well less than a milliamp so uh, they shouldn't really be um, they shouldn't really have burned out so uh, it's a bit of a disappointment. It may be you know, a bad batch of resistors or something that they've actually, and that's why they've failed. I don't know, but that's where the problem lay. These two resistors are packed in, causing the whole thing to just not be able to start itself running. So, looks like I won't be buying another one of these just uh, for a little while, because this can go uh, back on the garage outside. <laughs>